this video, I'm looking at the effects of different length intakes on my naturally aspirated 16 valve ABF engine. Back at CTG Performance, we're on the dyno again, this time testing the longest of three intake setups. With the ECU now optimised for the current long length setup, let's have a look at the results. So the long length intake has made 201.6 horsepower and 230 Nm. The best previous on a different setup was 204.5 horsepower and 233 Nm. There's also less area under the curve between 4000 and 4500 RPM. Let's try something silly, let's just take the foam air filter off and just see, does it make a difference? I realise what I'm doing is I'm avoiding bits to not get burnt. Don't think of throttles, it might not come out, but there you go. It's used but still works. Air filter removed, you can now see the long intake trumpets. Without the protection of an air filter, the torque curve looks mostly the same and we've gained maybe one to two newton meters peak. A quick look at the results from the different length intakes that have been tested. These will be discussed in more depth later on. But how did we get here? Let's look at the intake length of some of the factory options for Volkswagen. So we've got, start with an, an early ABF, so we've got the, uh, you can tell it's early because it tapers only to the sort of midway point, but the length is all the same. So. We haven't got the cylinder head here in a minute, we'll look at that in a second. We've got a lower half and upper half. Let's start with this lower portion where the injectors go. Uh, so let's say, let's take that as 80 mil because it's kind of halfway between the short and the long. Let's have a look at the upper section from where it would join to this uh, to where the a little tiny bell mouth opening in there is, it joins the four into the common chamber. That's looking like about 32, 33. So if we add, well, what I've done in the past, well, I've measured it, it ended up being about 400. So we take a 32, add the uh, 32 cm centimeters, uh, 320 mil, add the 80 mil, we've got 400. Plus whatever's in the head. And then I've seen someone do this once and fit the 20 valve intake meant for forced induction. If we look here, that's uh, in the 140 to 150 mil range, which is much shorter. Let's have a look over here, we've got a cylinder head. There. Use this pokey stick to just get to the valve stem. Put my finger there. So that's 80. So 80 at the point where I'm just touching the valve stem. So I give it a little bit more. So I'd say, I don't know, 83 plus 400, so 480, 483, the full length of the standard ABF intake to the valve. We've got a comparison for you here between factory standard and uh, modified with um, shortened about as maximum as you can make. So this is 30 mil shorter in the runner length. And then the, uh, the chamber, plenum chamber was increased by the same amount. So uh, 30 mil square added on. This one 
gains about three to four horsepower on a standard ABF. And then when you add other mods, it kind of compounds and works together, which I think is an enabler of how the engine in this form made 201 horsepower. But yeah, so with the, these cutouts where the HT leads go, that is the packaging limitation, unless you do something really extreme. So, why do the uh, car manufacturers use these really long metal or plastic intake manifolds on NA engines? So, there's something called pulse tuning that goes on that they can, they're trying to utilise. And if you think about it, the a cam profile, so, you know, you've got this the, you know, inverse teardrop shape, the valve spends a little bit of time open, but the rest of the time it's closed. So all that time, what's the air doing? Because it, it's not being drawn in the whole time. But when it hits a closed valve, or a valve that's just closed, you've got the pressure ramming up against that valve, and then it goes back towards the open end of the intake. So on a, uh, like a, uh, an open bell mouth, like on a throttle body or a carb, or where a plenum chamber would get to the, um, the common section, the plenum. The air uh, and the pressure will be a reversion wave and go back towards the valve again. And this happens multiple times a second, um, depending on what RPM we're doing. So if we look at uh, the, the first one of these, the first wave, uh, at, let's pick a sensible RPM. So if we go right here, 4,600, uh, we need something that's nearly three meters long, which is a massive um, intake. So we can't really use that unless we're gonna make, mock up something that's sticking well out the front of the car. So the first is the strongest pulse, and then it, the um, amplitude drops. So second, 1.3 meters, and we get to the fifth and sixth, and we've got uh, that 4,600 RPM. We've got a um, 540 mil there for that, or um, the sixth pulse at 450. So that's that sixth pulse for the peak torque values is actually in the ballpark for the factory intake and the ITB intake that I've, I've got in my car. The full 480 and 475 uh, highlighted here in a plethora of colours. Uh, so yeah, that, um, that sixth pulse is being used for the peak torque. So if we then look at the, you know, something near peak power, we actually could be using the fourth pulse. So that's a stronger pulse. Uh, the 470, 480 range here, 6,400, 6,500 RPM. But if we go back to the, if we remember the, the shorter intake that uh, the 20 valve uses, that would be total length about 220 millimeters. And we go all the way down here. Fourth wave, 220 is off the charts, we can't use it. The fifth wave, so a little bit less, 220, 11,000 RPM. So it, yeah, uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> maybe, maybe some kind of uh, racing Civic. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, that's why the short ones don't really work. They're losing out on all of this pulse tuning effect. From what we showed earlier with the cylinder head, so we've got from valve to the flat, we've got about 80 millimeters, and to this section where the uh, a, where a trumpet will mount to that's uh, we have got a short one alongside but that's about 320 so we're back at the uh, 400 again uh, so these are 105 mil you might say on the dyno print at 110 but they're 105 and the other ones that we've tried or I've tried are a 35 and a 75 and we'll get you a Put up a video of those in a second.
yeah, you can even hear what these sound like because we've got the 105, we've got the 35, and so you should just go. <laughs> and then this one. Quite a difference, wouldn't you agree? Okay, so why have you gone down the individual throttle body route? Well, why would anybody do it? Um, I think some people might do it because they look nice and it does look pretty cool, especially if you've got one of the smooth bay builds. Uh, seeing the the shorter setups with the shiny trumpets right there, it does look cool, even if it's maybe not optimised. The the noise you can never really beat the noise if you've got a four cylinder. The noise of individual one per cylinder carbs or throttles, that iconic noise that we associate with fast cars from years gone by, you know, rally cars, twin cam um, escorts going through rally stages, it sounds great. Uh, and then the other thing is, if you're doing an NA motor build, it, it's in it's one of the ingredients in building a high, you know the a very highly tuned high output na engine why is that well as soon as you start to do things like putting really wild cams in uh, when you've got a single throttle with um four or however many cylinders sharing the same plenum chamber there's points where um like low rpm that kind of thing where the pulses from those other cylinders are fighting each other a little bit and getting it to run nicely at lower RPMs, idling, just moving it around. If you drive it on the road, you pull up to a junction, maybe it's very hard to, for it to not stall. As soon as you go to um, individual throttles, all that's gone, really. All the interaction between the cylinders is gone. They do their own thing. Uh, this one idles perfect like there's probably some standard gti's that don't idle as nice as this and yet this has got high lift cams longer duration um uh, yeah so that's one of the reasons that's why i actually went for it um another reason for me is well i bought them a long time ago when they were i think only a, a hundred quid from <laughs> from overnight from malaysia the chap even phoned me up to see if they'd got there okay, which was nice of him. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting as an experiment, but because I've got the 3D printer, uh, it enables me to do things with... It's a manageable size per component. So with the, um, the standard intake you saw earlier, that requires everything's a cut and a TIG weld. Here, my 3D printer could print one or two of these uh, in one session. A whole intake, no, not with the plenum chamber. So, yeah, the cost per experimentation, pretty low, really. A, a reel of material is um, quite quite cheap. It doesn't use very much. It's just time then, really. Ele time electricity. The other uh, element is if you saw the pretty earlier video about the um, radiator and cooling pack setup uh, this this has allowed um, me to improve the sort of heat management because the the factory intake even if you've got a plastic air box and a rubber duct it's aluminium it's sitting above uh, a red hot cam cover and uh, the exhaust at the back end so at some point that heat soaks and gets very, very hot. Whereas on this one where the radiator's moved to the side, the oil cooler's right down the bottom, it's getting cool air through the grill. And even after 20 minutes on a race circuit, these are still cool to touch. And the, the actual throttle bodies themselves are not as hot as the uh, factory intake would be. So it's, you know, getting cooler temps. So after all that, Turns out the ones that I calculated and started off with, which were the uh, 75mm ones in the red, were actually the best all along with that. 
check out the amount of torque across nearly the whole rev range, apart from the very top, that you lose by going to the 35mm one. So only 35mm shorter and it's lost an absolute ton. So around this point, maybe as much as 25, maybe even 30 newton meters down. And so maybe all of those, all of the cars we see with the very short ones, are still probably making lower torque even than that blue line. Unless they're revving to eight and a half, nine thousand RPM. So on uh, after this, appliance of science i think uh this is it really for this car or this not so much this car this power plant this package the abf engine can go out and be used on a track all day uh but um yeah i need more to do anything further with this package you're going to be doing stuff like changing the cams going madder with the cams solid lifters maybe getting a very fancy exhaust manifold made that again is a little bit of if you can't calculate it's experimentation so we're talking for both of those things the cams might be you know uh, 700 pounds the exhaust might be 1200 pounds that's if you get it right the first time and the maximum you'll probably get this up to is about 240 horsepower where for that kind of investment there's a lot of other things you could do i have got other abf engines so could do a boosted build or maybe retire this into another car use it for some of our club drives and look for power elsewhere suggestions and comments please <laughs>